All right, hey guys, what is up? It is Jake here on Jake Matthew Production to YouTube channel, and this is going to be the third tutorial in our uh, Visual Basic programming uh, kind of I don't know set or I don't know it's kind of like a season, isn't it? Because there's like episodes in a TV series, except for it's on YouTube, and there's not action because it's a tutorial. So I don't know what we want to call it, but let's call it a season. Let's call it season one, even though I don't know if there's gonna be more seasons because everybody doesn't make sense. Anyhow. Alright, so basically this is the third tutorial I'm going to be doing, and today we're actually going to get into more coding. Last time, if you remember, we went over uh, the visible property and how to use it based on a picture box to make a picture show up or not. And then I also showed you guys to remember that you can use most properties for more than just one thing. So, for example, just really quick, before we do anything else... Um, I should probably mention that I already have my form set up for this whole project. And really quick, I'll bring up this text document I made, you guys. So for this form right here that I have, this is everything you're going to need. Um, you should, based on the last two tutorials that I've made, you should be able to make this form on your own. But just in case, go ahead and pause the screen if you need to. And just bring all this up. And I've laid everything out here. So like, for example, for the calculate button. I have a button go is the name and calculate is the text. So you just need to change your properties for all this stuff. So I'll give you a second here to pause and watch this. And then just come back to us when the form is done. And if you can just do this form real quick, then more props to you. And uh, that means that you are understanding these tutorials perfectly and you're moving right along. All right, so I'm just going to exit out of that now. Don't need to save that. And the first thing I want to mention is everything that's on the form real quick. We're just going to go over it. So we have our form. We have two text boxes. We have three labels. And then we have two buttons. Now, our first button is our exit button. Our second button is our calculate button. And if you remember from the first tutorial, I always said that my main button or my, uh, my calculate button, my enter button, was always button go. So I have this name button go and my exit button exit. So now that that's all the way, we can actually begin what we're going to do. So basically, I made this form as a uh, an addition form. Um, there's, it's just very simple math, so we can get into the fact of taking something that somebody types into a text box, converting it, and making it for use as output. So what we're going to do is make sure that everything is set up perfectly, and then also, you want to go ahead and make sure that this final label is put on the uh, form just like it is right now. The reason being is you want to have a placeholder so you know how big it's going to be when it outputs. Because if you just set your visible mode to false without putting anything here, you're not going to know how much is there. So you're not going to know how to space your form. So for example, if I had it like this, but I didn't have any text in here to show them a placeholder, I would have no idea that I don't have enough space to show some text in case I need it. So I'm just going to undo that real quick. All right. And then, so that's why it's important to just put xxx.xx because you never know what your numbers are going to have. And usually I do two, two decimals. Uh, that's just me. So uh, that's it's the easiest placeholder. All right, now we're going to actually get into some of the code. Now, if you remember, to get into your code, all you need to do is double click on your object. So first, let's code the exit button. But first, I am going to actually go in my code and I'm going to delete everything because I had already set this up to make sure it works. And we're going to go in, and we're going to go and double-click our exit button. So this will bring up the code for what happens when we click on the exit button. All right. Now that you have your code up for the exit button, I'm going to show you one second really quick what a remark is. A remark up here, you can see these green letters. Now, these weren't in the program originally. I put these in. So this is what it would probably look like on your screen right now. But for me, it's going to look like this. And basically, these are called remarks. And these ones in particular are introductory remarks. So basically, an introduction remark is just saying um, what the name of the program is, who developed it, the date of the program, and what the purpose of the program is to do. So I have all that information up here. And you notice, if you just start typing, nothing is going to work. The way to set a remark is you can go into your code, and you want to press the apostrophe. And the apostrophe is a kind of it's kind of a subletter for a declaration or a remark and so once you do the apostrophe you can see that if you don't it's just black and it just seems it thinks it's code sorry I messed that up right there okay 
Um, but when you do it, you need to put your apostrophe and it'll turn green. So for the exit button, I might write something like, this code will close the program. Just as simple as that. So you always want to make sure that you remark every possible thing you can, because that way if somebody is going through your code that hasn't built the program themselves, they know what is going on and what is happening and where they need to change specific things. So when you're coding any exit button, and you're always going to do this on all of your forms, you're going to have some type of exit button. The only thing you need to do is type close and press enter. Now, if you don't have your IntelliSense um, up for some reason, you need to go close and then just do parenthesis open, parenthesis close. And then just click off and it'll be fine. Now, if we go and we run our form real quick, you can see that when we press exit, it closes the form. And that's all you ever need to do for an exit button. It's just close and be done with it. Don't put any extraneous code in there. Don't do any of that. You just need to be done with it. Press close, and you're good to go. All right, so now let's go into our calculate button, and let's figure this out here. So what we need to do is we need to take our text input. So let's run this real quick. So let's say I put 2 in here and 2 in here. So our, we know that our answer is going to be 4, but as of right now, when we press calculate, nothing happens. So what we need to do is take the numbers from these text boxes, turn them into actual numeric input, and then we need to output it to that final label that we had. Because if you remember, our label's property is set to false right now. So when our form loads, it's not visible to the eye. So let's just exit out of that, make sure we stop debugging. And now, the first way we're going to learn how to take text box input and change it around into a either numeric or alphanumeric code, this case being numeric, is the value function. So basically all this is, is you're gonna, I'm just gonna type in the code really quick here. And then I will explain it in just one sec. So here's what you wanna do. So the value right here, and then you wanna know, I'm sorry, V-A-L means value. So you want to know the value of your text box. So whatever the user inputs into the text box is going to have a value if it's numeric. So let's say I run this, and this just says, you know, Jake. That is not going to return a value because those are letters. There are no um, values assigned to letters in Visual Basic. So basically, this is what you need to write as your number. So when you're representing one of your text boxes, this will be it. So... I'm just going to erase this, and let's try this real quick. So if we want our total to be the value of whatever box 1 is, and the value of whatever box 2 is, since all this form is doing is adding, we are only adding, we're not doing any other math for right now. We're going to go ahead, and we're going to do val, and then we're going to put our text box 1, dot text, because you need to make sure that it's not what the text box value is, it's the the value of the text that is put into the text box. So we're going to do that. We're just going to close the parentheses and then just put a plus sign. And then you're going to go value of your second text box. Dot text. Good. All right. Now, when we press enter, this is going to come up wrong. Well, the problem is we need to assign this all into a form that will accept so it can show as this label. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually go to the beginning of this code, press enter, bring it down one line. And we're going to go in and we're going to make it so that that label is visible now. Because for us to output to that label, it does have to be visible. Sorry, I'm just doing a little formatting my code here. It's just a personal thing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say that the label final dot visible equals true so remember from last tutorial that's all we need to do is just say that you want this object to be this property and then this is whether you want it to be on or not all right but now you still see we have these blue lines that say that end of statement expected well that's just basically visual basic telling you that you have an addition sign but you don't have an equal sign so it's not outputting anywhere so we need to go in front of here and we need to tell it to make that text available on that label. So we need to type in label, final, 
which is the label we want to output the text to, dot text, because again, we're not doing it to the label, we're doing it to the text within the label. So dot text, and then we're just going to press equals, and then it's simply value 1 plus value 2, and that's it, guys. That's all we have to do. If we run this program real quick, we're going to go 2 plus 2, and then we're going to press our calculate button, and there we have it. There it is. There's 4. And you can do whatever you want. We can do 200 plus, you know, 200. Press that calculate button. It'll keep going. Um, let's do 200.5 and 200.5 just. And uh, let's do 200.56. Just so I can show you the importance of keeping that placeholder right there. So there you go. And then basically, you can just keep clearing these. Adding other numbers. Uh, 0 plus 0. Gotta calculate that. It's going to be 0, obviously. Uh, you can do negative numbers. You can throw them in there. It'll all work because you're just taking the values out of those text boxes and assigning them to the text that it belongs to. It's as simple as that. When you come down, when it comes down to it, you just need to think, what do I need to do? And that is you need to take the text from this box and add it to the text from this box and then show it as the text in this label. And when you think about it that way, it kind of wraps it around the concepts of what we are doing and it makes it so much easier to understand so that everybody knows what's going on, how to do it, and why they're doing it. Alright, well guys, that's going to be the end of the tour of the day. I hope you guys learned a lot about the value function. Uh, we will mess around with this, maybe some more. But it probably, it's, it's not one of the greatest tools to use. It's just kind of getting your feet wet into the use of uh, programming for numbers and changing and verifying stuff so that you know how to assign stuff to other variables. So basically, that is it for today, guys. I will see you next time when we try the uh, try parse method next time. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.